Chapter Eight of Among the Farmyard People by Clara Dillingham Pearson. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Claire. The very short story of the foolish little mouse. The mice who lived in the barn and around the granaries had many cousins living on the farm who were pleasant people to know. Anyone could tell by looking at them that they were related. Yet there were differences in size, in the coloring of their fur, in their voices, and most of all in their ways of living. Some of these cousins would come to visit at the barn in winter, when there was little to eat in the fields. The meadow mice never did this. They were friendly with the people who came from the farmyard to graze in the meadow, yet when they were asked to return the call they said, No, thank you. We are an out-of-door family, and we never enter houses. We do not often go to the farmyard, but we are always glad to see you here. Come again. When the cows are in the meadow, they watch for these tiny people, and stop short if they hear their voices from the grass nearby. Of course the horses are careful, for horses will never step on any person, large or small, if they can help it. They are very particular about this. All through the meadow you can see, if you look sharply, shallow winding paths among the grasses, and these paths are worn by the running to and fro of the meadow mice. Their homes are in stumps of trees, or in the higher ground near the ditches. In these homes the baby meadow mice stay until they are large enough to go out into the great world and eat roots, grasses and seeds with their fathers and mothers. Sometimes they do go out a little way with their mother before this, and they go in a very funny fashion. Of course, when they are babies they drink warm milk from her body, as the children of most four-legged people do. Sometimes a young meadow mouse does not want to stop drinking his milk when it is time for his mother to leave the nest, so he just hangs on to her with his tiny toothless mouth and when she goes, she drags him along on the ground beside her. The ground is rather rough for such soft little babies, and they do not go far in this way, but are glad enough to snuggle down again with their brothers and sisters. There is no danger of their being lonely, even when their mother is away, for the meadow mice have large families, and where there are ten babies of the same age, or even only six, which is thought a small family among their people, it is not possible for one to feel alone. There were two fine meadow mice who built their nest in the bank of a ditch and were much liked by all their relatives. They had raised many children to full-grown mousehood and were kind and wise parents. When their children were married and had homes of their own, they still liked to come back to visit. The father and mother were gentle and kindly, as all mice are, and were almost as handsome as when they first began to gnaw. Nobody could say that he ever saw a bit of dust on either of them. The brown fur of the upper part of their bodies, and the grayish-white fur underneath, always lay sleek and tidy, and from their long whiskers to the tips of their hairless tails, they were as dainty as possible. That was one reason why they were so fine-looking, for you know it makes no difference how beautiful one may be in the first place, if he does not try to keep clean, he is not pleasant to look at, while many quite plain people are charming because they look well and happy and clean. Now this pair of mice had eight mouse babies in their nest. The babies were no larger than bumblebees at first, and very pink. This was not because their fur was pink, but only because it was so very short that through it and their thin skin one saw the glow of the red blood in their veins. "'Did you ever see such beautiful babies?' said their mother proudly to her neighbors. "'They are certainly the finest I ever had.' Her friend smiled, for she always said the same thing whenever she had little ones. Yet they understood, for they had children of their own, and knew that although mothers love all alike, there is always a time that the youngest seems the most promising. That is before they are old enough to be naughty. The days passed, and the eight baby meadow mice ate and slept and pushed each other around and talked in their sweet, squeaky little voices. They were less pink every day and more the color of their father and mother. They grew, too, so fast that the nest was hardly large enough for them, and the teeth were showing in their tiny pink mouths. Their mother saw that they would soon be ready to go out into the world, and she began to teach them the things they needed to know. She took them outside the nest each pleasant day, and gave them lessons in running and gnawing, and showed them how to crouch down on the brown earth, and lie still until danger was past. After she had told them many things, she would ask them short questions to make sure that they remembered. "'How many great dangers are there?' she said. Five, answered the little mice. "'What are they?' Hawks, owls, weasels, cats, and men. Tell me about the hawks. Hawks are big birds that seem to float in the air. They have very sharp eyes, and when they see a mouse they drop suddenly down and catch him. They fly in the daytime. 
tell me about owls. They are big birds who fly at night without making any noise. They can see from far away, and they catch mice. Tell me about weasels. They are slender little animals, nearly twice as long as a mouse. They have small heads, four long legs, and sharp claws, have brown fur on their backs and white underneath, and sometimes, when the weather is very cold, they turn white all over. Tell me about cats. Cats are very much bigger than weasels, and are of many colors. They have long tails and whiskers, and dreadful great eyes. They walk on four legs, but make no noise because they have cushions on their feet. Tell me about men. Men are very big, two-legged people, and when they are fully grown, are taller than cows. They make noise in walking, and they can neither smell nor see us from afar. And what are you to do when you see these dangers coming? We are to run away as fast as we can from hawks, weasels, owls, and cats. If a man comes near us, we are to lie perfectly still and watch him, and are not to move unless we are sure that he sees us, or is likely to step on us. Men do not know so much about mice as the other dangers do. And what if you are not sure that some creature is a hawk, an owl, a weasel, or a cat? If we even think it may be, we are to run. When are you to run? At once. Say that again. We are to run at once. Very good. That is all for today. You can see how well the meadow mice mother brought up her children, and how carefully she taught them about life. If they had been wise and always minded her, they would have saved themselves much trouble. Seven of them were dutiful and obedient, but the largest of the eight, and the finest looking, liked to decide things for himself, and often laughed at his brothers and sisters for being afraid. Because he was so big and handsome, and spoke in such a dashing way, they sometimes wondered if he didn't know as much as their mother. One sunshiny day, when all the eight children were playing and feeding together in the short grass, one of them saw a great black bird in the air. "'Oh, look!' she cried. "'That may be a hawk. We'd better run.' "Pooh," said the biggest little meadow mouse. "'Who's afraid?' "'Mother said to run,' they squeaked, and seven long bare tails whisked out of sight under a stump. "'Ho, ho!' said the biggest little meadow mouse. "'Before I'd be so scared. I dare you to come back. I dare you to—' Just then the hawk swooped down, and that is the end of the story, for after that there was no foolish little meadow mouse to tell about. End of chapter 8 Recording by Claire